What's up, everybody? You're back with the Chosen Con, and today in the studio we have with us Mr. Sergio Pawar. What's up, man? Right. You made it, man. <laughs> Thank right. you. I was uh, tough, uh, tough getting out of here, but uh, well, yeah, you ha- you came all the way out from uh, was it Birmingham? Yeah, 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah, flew out here. <laughs> <laughs> One day, man. One day we're going to start flying people out to the studio. <laughs> but no, so today we touched on a lot of cra- crazy things in the podcast. Yeah. I want to talk about just uh, the beginning. So I know you own Dreamfinity Studios. You yeah. uh, you have a, a very successful real estate company. But I want to take a step back and dive into, I guess, you began, you were born in Birmingham. What was that like, man? Like yeah, yeah, I was born in Birmingham. Um, just to correct you, the... Construction company, construction not a real company. estate company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real estate game is something that nobody wants to be a part of. No, it's no, a crazy no, right game. I can't afford but, to. Um, yeah, no, growing up in Birmingham and uh, the mentality of um, how life was in Birmingham, how life is here, is uh, completely different, man. Why do you say that? Everybody's on the go there. Everybody, it's a rush, rush, rush. Everybody's hustling there. Everybody wants to get ahead. And that doesn't even mean if it's in an honest living. Everybody wants to get ahead. No matter what they have to do, they will do to get ahead. Whether you're doing illegal stuff, whether you're selling drugs, whether you're partying, whatever you're doing, everybody wants their finger in everything just to try and get ahead over and there. So what, what was it like for you? Like, what were you doing as a young kid? It was kid? the same thing, man. When I was a young kid, it was the same thing, man. I got mixed up in the wrong crowd. And uh, like I said in the, in, in the podcast that we did before, um, the mentality of even like our parents and stuff out there, it wasn't, uh, you know, go to school and get a good education and this and that because they knew that the community that we was bringing in, being brought up in that everybody was held down like my mom used to say to me like like I want you to go to school I want you to succeed but like you're not listening so just like don't bring trouble to the doorstep don't bring trouble home like do, go and do, do whatever you're gonna yeah. do but just don't bring trouble home you know so we lived with that mindset and we lived with that um, mentality I guess and I'm not saying that my mom brought me up in the wrong way mm-hmm. it's just that I was so far gone with my friends and I, I put them as so much as a priority or on a pedestal that I kind of put my family second place. But that's everybody in my community did that. That was the norm. That was the norm where it was okay to do that. It was okay to, it was acceptable. And then what happened? So basically you were doing all this, you were in the wrong crowd, weren't really going to school at all. And then, and then your parents, like, what happened? Your mom? It's just, like, uh, you know, you just get in trouble, you get in trouble, you get in trouble, and it just got to the point where it just, uh, it just someone had to put a stop to it, right? So yeah. um, I remember Uncle Suk came from um, uh, Canada, and he came to England, and um, he basically told me that, you know, you're coming to Canada. You're coming to Canada to make a life for yourself and stuff like that. And it wasn't just like, you know, a happy transition. It was a super emotional talk when my mom's crying, you know, my grandparents are crying, everyone's crying, and... Um, when I came here um, um, from Canada, it wasn't like, oh, well, you know, we'll see you in a couple of months. Come and visit us. It was literally like my mom told me that, you know, don't ever come back to England until you make something of yourself. You know, don't ever come back to England until, you know, you make us proud. And it wasn't like it took me six months to move over here where I was like, oh, I can make a slow transition or say goodbye to my friends or anything like that. It wasn't like that. Yeah. Like within 36 hours, I left every my whole life behind. Within 36 hours, I moved to Canada, right? And then you said in the podcast, you worked at Subway. You, you, you became, it really humbled you, let go of all the gold chains and all of that. And then I guess you just went job to job. You you met your wife, right? Yes, right? yes, yes. You got to give yes, her so a shout out. You mean? It was, it, yeah, I must have thrown that out yeah. there. But it was kind of a roller coaster. I mean, um, uh, when I got here, uh, the first thing my uh, my grandfather's brother and everyone said to me when, when they sent me here was like, take off your earrings, take off your chain, take off your gold braces, and give it to us. And it was like a reality check. Like I went from, you know, having money and, and, and driving like cars, not even having like a license and what driving kind of cars. Car you're, like you're, a BMW, the, a blue BMW convertible was yeah. one of the cars that we used to roll around in. And um, I went from that to coming here. And now I'm like, you know, got a Honda Civic. You know, I'm working. I'm not like I'm saying there's anything wrong with Honda yeah, Civics. Yeah, I love Honda I'm Civics. I'm just saying, yeah. Honda, everyone goes through a Honda Civic at you one point to. in their life. You have to. It's a part of life. But, I, you know, now I'm working at Subway. And, um, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm wearing a hairnet. You know, and I, I'll never forget that first day I was working at Subway, man, because the, right at the end of my shift as well, um, the owner of the Subway, you know, my uncle came to pick me up. And um, just as I'm about to leave, he looks at me, he, he shouts my name. He's like, hey, Serge. And I look back, I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, you're leaving? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you forgot to wash the toilets. Yeah. Like, you forgot to clean the washroom. Yeah. And I was like, and I was going to, like, beat the crap out of this guy. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, go clean the washroom. And I looked at my uncle and my uncle's like, just go do it. And I went and I scrubbed around the toilet and I scrubbed under the sink and I washed the floor and I looked at him and I'm like, you happy? He's like, I'm happy. And I went home and I'm like punching the, the, the airbag console in front of me while I'm driving home. I'm crying. I'm screaming in the car like, 
like f this basically like what the hell like yeah. I, I told my uncle straight away man so come like just fly me back to england man like i'm out of here like i'm going home i don't want to be in this country and he just kept laughing man he just like calm down man don't worry he's like everything is going to be you know it's a cycle right you have to experience this stuff you have this to is life that. like yeah. welcome to real life right yeah, most people it's unfortunate but their parents or even family keep them in that box in that bubble and then they never really get to appreciate that and yeah, see that man, you got to get humbled right exactly this man, life will humble you quick exactly and, and i already knew you know like like i said man in my house there was like mice running around i had rats in my house lived in a neighborhood where the 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 government the police gave up on that neighborhood so it was a real rough neighborhood man it wasn't a nice neighborhood i didn't come from a very nice house and stuff like that it was a very 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 old house my granddad did what he can to make ends meet you know grew up without a father mm-hmm. and stuff like that so you know when i got here and i worked at subway it was more of a more of a like okay this is what real life is i got to work now you know and and from there going to JR furniture yeah big up to Mal um JR and, and then he used, played a yeah. big milestone in my life of trying to make sure that he, he made me understand that you're selling furniture for me now but this is not the end of your life you limit you're you. you're going way higher than this you just don't know it yet and so then from that JR you you end up opening up Dream Fendi you end up doing yeah. all that which we dive into but what i wanted to kind of even end off with was what happened when you tasted success and then you went back Yeah, That's so when I out. when I finally uh, when I worked for my family's company and then after that I got married and then we went to a basement and you know every day I would tell my wife like hey man like every day I would come home I would like f this basement I would yeah. scream it out loud f this basement f this basement and my wife would be like stop saying that and I was like no I was like because if I get comfortable in this basement today yeah. I'm never going to leave mm-hmm. there will never be a tomorrow that I leave so every day I used to swear I used to look at the basement like I hate this this is yeah. garbage like my life is garbage I used yeah. to say that because I didn't want to accept that I was living there I didn't want to accept that, that but it was a stepping stone in my life and when i finally built my own house within one year i i, I put all my savings everything i bought a lot i built my own house yeah. which is amazing um and i went back to england after 10 years so i haven't seen my family for 10 years never seen my mom my grandparents nothing they all came out for my wedding and um that was the first time i seen them and um, i think you can check out the video of when i seen my mom um you probably we'll hooked up on we'll this link yeah, yeah for yeah, sure yeah. but when 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 i seen everybody it was a uh, it was super emotional man like i'm crying and everything and i finally got to tell my mom like you know like i hope you're proud of me now because i made a lot of mistakes when i was a yeah. kid man i made a lot of lot of mistakes i went down the wrong path and i had nothing to show for my life back then but when i went back to england i got a mixed response i got the first response was you know we're so proud of you and you know you accomplished something of your life and good for you and you got out of the hood and uh, wait, the, wait, when you got there though everyone was what were, what was everyone like before they everything was the exact same not one thing had changed yeah. the shops that were there when i was there before were there the people that the job that they were doing they were there the funniest thing was that never thing i remember uh, i'll never forget sorry was i rolled down the road and i remember when i was leaving i was crying and my buddy was sitting on the wall and he he's, uh, he's got a joint in his mouth and he looks at me and he's laughing and he's like see you later bro right and i didn't say nothing to him i just had my head down I was emotional and i left for canada and 10 years later when i went back there on that road he's sitting on that wall no with a joint in his mouth no way i swear to god wow and yeah. i looked at him and i'm like now i'm like in a suit you know what i mean i'm accomplished i'm i'm driving down the road a brand new range rover sport you know what i mean and that's nothing like i'm saying like i wasn't bragging or anything like that i wasn't that's just like this is something that i really worked hard for and now yeah. we get to enjoy these perks in life right i mean yeah. um but he was the exact same and everybody was the exact same the street looked the exact same my house looked the exact same and then how did that you said so half of the people were well, how were they when they, they were so you? welcoming man they were giving me a hug oh my god you made it I was taking pictures with them and stuff like that not like i was a celebrity or yeah, anything yeah. but just they were saying that you got out of the hood man like you got out of there and you finally made something yourself and always like on instagram they're always reminding me like uh, um you know they're always telling me like we're so proud of you and stuff and like uh, you know like tiger Uh, biggie yeah. these are the nicknames of the people out there but uh what about know, the other Duran, half they were telling me like yeah we're proud of you, but the other half were like you sold us out like you left the hood you sold yeah. us out you don't care or you got rich and you left and i'm like do you even understand like what i'm doing in canada everyone thought i came to canada just jumped in a ferrari and started driving a ferrari <laughs> That'd around be nice. like i'm cleaning washrooms in subway yeah. i'm experiencing real life and trying to jump all these hurdles just to just to become somebody and i'm i'm constantly fighting a battle with myself to 
uh, you know, become somebody in my yeah. life and, and stay humble at the same time. Like it's my tough. mom would just say, you know, like reach for the stars, but keep your feet on the ground, right? So I think that's the best way to end it off too, man. That's a beautiful sentence. Yeah, you want to repeat that? What did your mom say? It, she said, it, always reach for the stars, but keep your feet on the ground, man. Always stay humble. Yeah, always, man. You can be whatever you want to be in life, but you must always remain humble, man. Because when you stop remaining humble and you think you can get ahead of yourself or you get too cocky or you think I'm better than other people, that's when the downhill spiral starts, man. Always appreciate everybody, man. Everybody it, man. in life. I love it. Yo, I want to say thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, man. I right? appreciate it. For people, what would be the best way for them to connect with you? Uh, Sergio Power on um, Instagram. You can add me there or uh, follow us on Dreamfinity Studios. Um, no business venture ideas. Hit him up for some motivation. Yeah, Talk to him. Grab yeah, a coffee with the guy. Anyone out mm-hmm. there ever needs to be mentored or you feel like your cousins, brothers, anybody's going down the wrong path, hit me up. For business ventures, don't hit me up, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. Yo, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to have some interesting conversations. But this one kind of took the cake, man. Damn, yeah. I wasn't ready for this. Yeah, this was so. amazing. It was really, really good, man. All right, then. Peace. See you later, guys. Well, that was emotional. I, uh, I know you probably got the tissues handy. If you want to watch something more lighthearted, check out the video below. If you want to cry some more, check out the full podcast because there will definitely be tears. Please subscribe for more. Thanks.